light onto our path. And I've been encouraging myself today in the Lord and in the Word. You know, many times we have to encourage ourselves. And if it wasn't for the Word of God that we could draw our strength from. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the praises of God. But David said that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Well, you know, it, it talks about how David danced before the Lord with all his might, even to the point where the ephod, the, the, the ephod when he was wrapped around his loins, yeah. that he had danced all his clothes off, and that's all he had on. God. But, you know, I know he was caught up in heavenly places in Christ. Yes. He, he didn't even realize, I don't believe that David even realized that he had lost his robe. Because his, his whole attention was upon Jesus. His eyes were set upon the mark of the prize of the high calling. It wasn't because he wasn't a modest man. That's not what it was. It was because he loved the Lord. You know, David sinned, but his heart was towards the Lord. Praise God. And when he did sin, he fell on his face. Many times in sackcloth and ashes. And humbled himself before the Lord. And he trusted in the mercy of God. Even when the prophet Nathan came to him and told him. When he began to count the armies of Israel. And he gave him different alternatives. And what did David fall upon? He fell upon the mercy of God. Even, even then knowing that God and his Wisdom would have to judge him. And that he lost a lot of Israel. <coughs> Praise God. But he trusted rather in the hand of the Lord and in the chastisement of the Lord rather than to be delivered onto his enemies Amen. or onto the pestilence and the plagues of this earth. Hallelujah. We walk in a dark and a perverted world. But I was delighting myself in the Lord trying to encourage myself as I was reading in the book of Acts and many times I've turned to the scripture that the Lord gave me the first time I went to Canada and I know that if my family has been plagued with these things then I know everybody's family has been plagued with these things because we're living in a time when our whole world is becoming as Sodom and Gomorrah and this is from the book of uh, Acts, and it's the 8th chapter and the 26th verse. And it talks about, it says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. I, I get so encouraged when I hear about the angel of the Lord. Yes. When I think about Jesus and his Holy Ghost and his angel of his presence. And I think about how the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Spoke to him in that still, quiet voice. Or just spoke to him in a little flutter deep in his belly. Or spoke to him with the waves of the Holy Ghost going down his shoulder. Whatever it was, it was the unction of the Holy Ghost. And it bore witness to his spirit. He said, Arise and go towards the south. Unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert which was hard country. Hard country. He was sending him out to a dry place, into the desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a strange man of a foreign country, a eunuch of great authority under Candice, queen of the Ethiopians. And, and in this day and age that we're living in, many are following pervert spirits. And the Bible speaks against it. But what the Lord showed me was that even though the eunuchs of their day were made eunuchs even from the time they were young children, still they were basically the transgender of, uh, of their society. Because they had no, they, they, they became neither male nor female. They were at the disposal of the queen. She could dress them up however she wanted to. She could basically do whatever she wanted to do with that, per that man. Now they made him a eunuch so that he'd be strong. And so that 
he would be trusted with the women. But nevertheless, the same spirits that run rampant in our world today, what ran rampant in that day and age. So my heart goes out to that man. And I know that just how God had compassion on him. He has compassion on those that are bound with every kind of spirits. Demonic forces that have been set loose upon our earth that have been here since the beginning of time. There's nothing new under the sun. But he said, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candice, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. You know, many of our transgender and our homosexual and lesbian society, they, brought, they have risen to high heights in the government and into the states. And the Lord does not want us to be intimidated by that spirit. But he wants us to go in a spirit of love and in a spirit of compassion. Knowing that if it were not for the grace of God, even we are capable of any sin. Yes. Because it's only the love of God that can restore, Glory. recreate, and deliver a soul. Yes. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. So he went in the love of God by the wooing of the Spirit. And as he was returning, and here was the, the eunuch. He was, he was a man of great authority. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Oh, Philip was a son of God. He was led by the spirit. He wasn't led by the flesh. He wasn't led even by his own spiritual pride. He wasn't led by his, the, the desires of his flesh, yes. of, of, of some religious wanting to make a name for himself, but he was led by the true spirit of yes. God, by the yes. love of God. He had fasted and prayed, and yes. he had got alone with Jesus Christ, oh, yeah. so that he began to know the spirit of God. Yes. He began to walk out on the waters. God. We can yes. go in our closet and we can fast and we can pray, but if we don't step out upon the waters in faith, then God can never really use us. Yes. Praise God. Praise. So that when then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. You know, God might send you into any kind of hell hole. You never know where God might send you next. Just make sure the Spirit leads you there. Yes. Lord, man. Hallelujah. Glory. And Philip, what Philip did when he knew the Spirit was moving on him, he didn't just slowly walk, questioning the unction of the Holy Ghost. What did Philip do? It said he ran. He ran. He ran onto the chariot. He did not question. He did not laugh at the angel of the Lord. When he went in, the angel came and told Sarah that she was conceived a child. Oh, he did not doubt the Lord and have to be made dumb like Zechariah, John the Baptist's dad. He didn't have to be chastened of the Lord and have to fall back a little bit and go through the same test and the same trial all over again, except this time it would be harder. Yes. Praise God. You know, at home, I, 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 I break, I've uh, trained several horses. And there's one thing I've learned about horses and the Lord would show me. He said, when you have to stay one step ahead of them because <laughs> they're a lot bigger and a lot stronger than you are. Yes. Praise God. And when you feel like you're going to fight, get, get, get into a fight, make sure that you are ready for that fight. Because that's like a giant. You know there's giants in the land. We have to be we have to be clothed with the gospel. We have to run this race with patience. We have to have on that breastplate of faith, that helmet of salvation. 
salvation. We have to have no more than anything the sword of the Spirit. And we have to pray without ceasing, loving our God, asking continually for Him to renew a right spirit within us that we can walk humbly before our Lord. Hallelujah. And, and when you when you move with a work with a horse, and when you work with anything, you pick and choose your battles. You make sure you're ready. And you make sure you kind of feel, you look for that unction, and you kind of feel that horse, what he's gonna do. And if you feel like you're not quite ready to tackle that, what you feel like that horse, you know that horse is gonna do next. Then you kind of back out in a nice way where you're still on top. So that you can come back and fight that same battle a different way at another time. But you have time to think about it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus wants us to be clothed with him. Because he has already paid the price. He's already run the race. He's already been victorious. And he says if we walk in him, then he will do it through us. We have to be possessed. We have to be consumed with the fire of the Holy Ghost. That burning fire of Jesus Christ. And be willing to say, yes, Lord. Here I am. Send me. Take those palms of fire and put them on my lips. Oh, that your word, that you might cover me in the shadow of your hand. Because you put your words within me. Writing them on the fleshy tables of our heart. Take away the stoniness out of our heart and of our spirit. And renew us in the spirit of our mind. That we might be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to be like Philip. You know, Philip inspires me. I want to run to the transgender, to, to the transgender, to the LB, LQ, whatever it is. I want to run if God sends me. I want to run to the lost to save some out of a burning pit where the imps of hell are jumping up trying to grab them and drag them down. You know, when we walk the city, the streets of Vancouver, 95% of the people that we see on the streets injecting right there in front of us are First Nations. Yes. It just breaks my heart. Hallelujah. It breaks my heart. But I know it's because the devil's mad. I know it's because God's going to send a revival to his people. That's why we come here. Praise God. A people that have always been spiritually hungry. And God has seen the hunger of their heart pass down even from their ancestors. And God said, I've come to give you that great spirit, the spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Praise his holy name. And Philip ran thither to him, and he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He was clothed with that wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel and might, the fear of the Lord. The spirits of the Lord all embodied in Jesus. We need those gifts of God. And they have to be working until those gifts bring us to the fullness of the spirit. But right now, it's the gift of wisdom. That's what we need in this place. We need the gift of miracles to fall down, come down. I've actually experienced, God has actually given us a foretaste. And we've actually experienced the gift of miracles and walked in it, haven't we, Brother Tom? Oh, thank God he gave us a taste of it. Once you have the taste of the heavenly, you know, nothing will ever compare to it. Praise God. But I know there's coming a time when it's not going to be like a dove, but Lord, allow us to experience that. 
but it's not going to be like a dove and fly away. But God's going to help him. Have us walk in it. Jesus walked in it. He went about doing good, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead. Oh, he was in the fullness of God. Hallelujah, walking amongst the people, the Son of Man and the Son of God. Oh, I thank God he's come to raise up a company. He's come to raise up an army of believers. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And he said, how can I accept some man guide me? This is what the Ethiopian said. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who, who shall declare this generation? Who shall declare his generation? The generation of Jesus Christ. Will you declare it? Oh, he's looking for a people that will declare his word. That he may establish it in the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. We need to rise up. Oh, rise up. Hallelujah. That we can walk in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Oh, to be able to open our mouths, brother, sister, and be able to preach Jesus unto a lost and unto a dying world. Oh, there can be nothing more wonderful than being consumed with his fire and being able to preach Jesus. All the ministering spirits of God moving through us with his wisdom. Only God can do that. And he will do it as we hunger and thirst after him. And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they will come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Praise God. Philip, that same Spirit, that same angel of the Lord that first spoke to him, he was caught up. He was caught up. This is the kind of revival of the sons of God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, Brother Tom. I want you to tell them about the miracles. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory.